I was born into a working class family and grew up in a small terraced home in the village of Grasmoor, a coal mining community in the county of Derbyshire in the north of England. My childhood was very humble, a far cry from the luxury of Buckingham Palace. I remember my first visit to London at the age of eight, standing in front of the railings of Buckingham Palace and watching the guards change. I turned to my dad and said, one day I'm going to work here. My childhood wish came true at the age of 18. In the course of only a year, I rose from a junior staff position in the Royal Household at Buckingham Palace to become one of the Queen's two senior footmen, which meant that I was with the Queen from when she woke each morning until she retired each evening. As one of the Queen's close attendants, I served Her Majesty in many capacities. I rode on the back of royal carriages for state occasions. I served Her Majesty tea each afternoon promptly at five, whether in one of the royal residences or on official tour of duty. I served breakfast to a young fairy tale princess on that world famous wedding day in 1982. And daily, I even helped groom, care and walk the Queen's beloved nine dogs, the Royal Corgis. As one of the Queen's two senior footmen, I began traveling with her and Prince Philip to almost every corner of the world. My experiences of royal tours will remain with me for the rest of my life, from walking on the Great Wall of China with the Queen, to a visit to the remote islands of Kiribati and Tuvalu on board the Royal Britannia. Each tour was unique and holds very special memories. Needless to say, I knew every member of the Queen's family. But in 1987, Prince Charles and Princess Diana asked me to become their butler at their country home, Highgrove House in Gloucestershire. It was there that I became butler to the most famous couple in the world, and responsible not only for their private entertaining at home and abroad, but also on official and private visits. When the royal couple separated, Princess Diana was asked to compile a list of everything she wanted to take from Highgrove House to her apartment at Kensington Palace. I later learned that on the top of that list, she placed my name. The princess was the personification of style, but it was also a privilege to serve and to know such an inspirational and unique human being. One of the many things I learned from her is that simplicity is often the most tasteful, attractive and elegant approach to everything, from entertaining to designing one's home. In 2003, I published my autobiography, A Royal Duty, which includes my personal account of my years in royal service, as well as my close friendship with the late princess, who was without doubt loved by millions of people all around the world. Welcome to Royal Manor, the English country house. I am proud to collaborate with Highland House with this new collection of eclectic English furniture inspired by my experience of living and working in country houses throughout England. Royal Manor is a collection of fine upholstery, case goods and occasional accents designed in the relaxed yet elegant style of the English countryside. The overriding theme in this furniture is the unique English mode of decorating. A style that is elegant and sophisticated, and yet, at the same time, never uptight or overly stuffy. Most English country homes have a certain lived-in quality about them, which allows you and your guests to sit back and be comfortable. Yet, these homes maintain an edge of casual elegance that is inherently and recognizably English. This character is what we captured in Royal Manor. Before our products were ever developed, I traveled the English countryside with the Highland House creative team to witness together some of the country's most elegant country homes. Our purpose wasn't to copy, but to take in the flavor of true country English elegance together. Among the elegant country houses we visited were Chatsworth House, the ancestral home of the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. Castle Howard, the ancestral home of the Howard family, used as a backdrop for the television series Brideshead Revisited. Harewood House, the ancestral home of the Earl and Countess of Harewood, cousins of Queen Elizabeth II, who has often stayed there. From our first-hand research, the Highland House creative team and I 
developed interpretations for our furniture collection. Each item in Royal Manor is unique in its Englishness. You will see that this sort of furniture is relevant to the way people desire to live today. Everything has a certain elegant quality about it, yet the theme is still casual and relaxed. The colours, fabrics and finishes are not those of England from 300 years ago. You will see that the colours, fabrics, functions and finishes have all the qualities that people want today. It was my honour and good fortune to spend 11 years directly serving Her Majesty the Queen. I should always be grateful for her generosity of spirit and for the many kindnesses she showed to me and to my family. I shall never forget her and it's my pleasure to name this small regal chair in her honour. This regal bed is a collection highlight with great personal significance. The intricate designs depicted in this metal bed remind me of the gates of Kensington Palace, London home to many royals, but none so famous as Diana, Princess of Wales. Kensington Palace was also my and my wife's home for five years. Our two children lived a privileged childhood, growing up with two royal princes in the nursery at Kensington Palace and Highgrove House. This dining table has the flavour of Chinese Chippendale styling, similar to antiques that Queen Victoria furnished the new front rooms at Buckingham Palace after she commissioned the facade we all know and recognise as the palace today. Queen Victoria's Chippendale furniture was originally built in the early 1800s for the famous Brighton Pavilion for the Prince Regent, who later became King George IV. What makes our dining setting unique is the intentional pairing of styles. We paired our Chinese Chippendale table with upholstered chairs from a totally different style and period, which in this case are elegantly upholstered chairs with carved Georgian style legs. One of my mentors at Buckingham Palace was Cyril Dickman. Cyril rose through the ranks to the very top, becoming the chief palace steward. Known and liked by all, he was called Cyril by Her Majesty. It's only appropriate that the butler's tray in my collection be named after Cyril. Historic recreations of jousting events are frequently held at England's most famous medieval castle, Warwick Castle, overlooking the River Avon in Warwickshire. The tassels and crenellations of this elegant table topper look much like the decorative edges of knight's tunics worn at these events. Alderley Edge is a village in the county of Cheshire, located south of Manchester. Alderley Edge takes its name from the wooded escarpment that towers above the Cheshire Plain. With its scenic walks and lovely views of the countryside, Alderley is now well known as a smart, very chic place to live. This beautifully detailed sofa would be quite at home in Alderley. This is the Cranbrook Display Obelisk. The style of the classical urn that sits on top of this display obelisk reminds me of a neoclassical urn I've long admired at one of the most beautiful country gardens in all of England, the renowned gardens at Sissinghurst Castle. My mother's name was Beryl. She had a premonition that somehow Buckingham Palace held the key to my destiny, and she was right. She loved to sit in a comfortable chair and knit and I feel she would be proud that I have chosen to name this charming, comfortable chair after her. I am now sharing the knowledge and expertise I gained during my years of royal service. I want to demonstrate to people in the United States and around the world that one need not be rich, royal or English to have a taste of the English country lifestyle.